Welcome to Family Gamer TV. We're here at the um, Sony area at E3, and we're looking at a game called Counter Spy. And I've got the producer, I think, of the game with me. Yep. Do you like to introduce yourself and tell us about what you do? Sure. My name is Alex Lee. I'm a producer in the San Mateo studio for Worldwide Studios, and I'm helping Dynamite, the creators of this game, ship that game this year. So it's it's got a very distinctive look and lots of elements to it. So there's lots there's lots to, lots to say. How do you want to start? Uh, so Cancer Spy is a sort of a spy mythology game set in 50s and 60s spy mythology. Uh, it's where you're trying to balance off the East and the West superpowers to stop a dastardly plan to nuke the moon. Mm -hmm. So as, as a spy, you, d you work for neither uh, side, you actually work for an agency called the Counter Agency. And their job is to keep the Cold War in check and make sure nothing goes too crazy. So uh, when you play the game, you're always choosing where to go, what missions to do, and uh, trying to collect a set of blueprints that will help um, you know, stop that, stop that mission to nuke the moon. So I'm just going to buy some ammo and some help here, and then we'll start the mission. So this is a PS4 game, but it's also on PS3 and Vita. There's also a mobile component, and so uh, it'll be a cross-buy, cross-play game. So is that the same game on those three platforms? Yes, it's the full game on Vita, on PS3, and on PS4. And the game on the mobile platforms on iOS and Android is slightly different um, in that it's, um, it, it's sort of like an away mission. What's one of the nice, interesting things about the game is if you play on mobile, uh, your inventories can be linked. Every mobile device is given a spy name that you can type into the PlayStation, and, it will and you can share your assets and things in the world. Off we go. So I'm going to sneak into this. Here we are in somewhere in, it's like Russia. So, so this is one of the later levels in the game. It's a little trickier, so um, I'm probably going to die. Let's see how far we go. Now in the top right hand corner, you can see there's another player. Uh, E3 player 469 is a rival who's playing on the, f on the show floor downstairs right now. And uh, I'm being challenged to beat his score. So. Uh, there's some nice social elements to the game. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, and, you got, and your friends will appear there too if they play. And when you actually surpass their score, you'll find their body in the world and you can steal an object from them. And will their body be where they died? Uh, well, actually the game is completely procedural, so yeah. they're playing okay. a different level. Every time you play through, the bases are completely different and randomized. And so it's, it's about a score-based thing. So is, if you were to put it in a genre, what would you say that the style of game is here? Because it seems to be quite, I'm, I'm, I'm finding it difficult to sort of pigeonhole it. Yeah, well, I mean, it, at its heart, it's like a, a traditional old school 2D platformer. But as you see, as I, as I go up towards objects, I can pull into cover and it becomes a 3D shooter. So it's a 3D uh, cover shooter, really, with, with some nice platforming elements. Yeah. A procedurally generated 3D yeah. cover shooter with platforming. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I've got some plans here, and I'm going to try and... All right, so now... So there's, sort of, there's puzzle solving as well. It's not, you're not just um, sort of shooting and quick reactions. You're, you're working out how to get forwards. Yeah, there's some, light, there's some light puzzle solving about how to get navigate through the bases most effectively. And if you really want to sort of take it up a notch, then there's, you can use uh, stealth through the whole game. You're making sure that no one sees you. If you use a stealthy weapon, then you can get through... Uh, pretty much undetected, and, and as you see in the top corner there right now, Headshot Captain, uh, if you manage to stealth through the entire game with no one seeing you, you know, that multiplier increases each time, so now I'm on a two times multiplier. So you're, there's an incentive to try and get through the game without, oh, I blew it. Uh, get through so he game. spotted you. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, there, there is the opportunity to uh, play the game in different ways. Yeah. Okay. Could you go through the game without shooting people? Uh, it, yes, you can. It's hard. Uh, uh, but you could literally try and run through with no one seeing you. It makes it very difficult to collect the plans. Um, but it, but is that, is it, would that, do you think someone could do that? Or is that just a... Uh, I, th I think you would end up using a stealthy weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, some, someone that one where they wouldn't see you, you very often. Um, because the procedural nature of it does mean that sometimes you're in situations where it's pretty tricky to get through without shooting. And so you're saying it was a cross-buy game, is that right? So if you bought it on one platform, you'd get all three, was that true? Uh, yeah, that's true. When the, when the game launches on PS4, it'll also launch on PS3 Vita the same day, and if you buy one, you'll get all three. And how about um, how it's being sold on the tablets? Um, 
So uh, we haven't announced the actual date when it will be available, but we would be uh, publishing Cat Spy on, on tablets, uh, on uh, iOS and Android, through the Apple Store, through the Android Play Store, uh, and it will most likely be a low-cost digital title. You know. it's a bit, so it would be a different game from the sounds of it? It is slightly different. I can show you if you want. Let's see. Yeah, let's have a quick look while we're here. So here, the mobile version, we're on an away mission with a different spy, and everything is gesture-based. So you swipe, and you can you can go into cover, and then I and then to shoot, I actually use two hands and like that. So the game so the game has much of the same look and feel of the of the main PlayStation title. And on these smaller away missions, you get to experience the kind of gameplay that you would have on the PlayStation. So I presume there's a, a sort of a plot that develops through the game? Yes, and so the plot is, a, is that both the East and the West are, are trying to um, collect enough information to be able to build a nuclear missile to nuke the moon. And so ca uh, counter the third agency of which this guy is the member of, are there to try and stop that happening. What did the moon do? Why is it? Why is the moon the target? Well, th this is what's kind of crazy is that, I mean, it sounds ludicrous. Why would the East and West nuke the moon? But it turns out it's actually true. And in the 50s and 60s, there really was a plan yeah. to nuke the moon. Like an act of power. Yes, yeah, yeah to sue, prove ultimate <laughs> supremacy, I guess. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit this campaign here. I'm going to restart. And I'm going to go. And so it's quite a small developer from the sound of it. Yes, the, the Dynamite era, a small development team based in San Francisco, about a dozen people, and uh, they've been working on this uh, for, for a year or so. Is this their first game? This is the first game from their studio, yes, but they're, they're made up of uh, guys who are you know, pretty much industry veterans uh, from LucasArts, um, some guys from 2K, um, and uh, the art director came from Pixar and so shares you know, a lot of the sort of similarities of some of his work where he worked on uh, movies like The Incredibles. Yeah, and you can see that, can't you? Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. So here we go. Let's go into the uh, the Western levels. Okay. So is it? It seems like it's a bit of a critique of that era. Is there is there sort of a political message, or is there, is there more going on in the game than just the enjoyment of it? Uh, it's definitely a critique. The guys are big fans of movies like Doctor Strange Love and things like that. And uh, and now we're in the Western level. You'll start. You'll be able to read the 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 signs and things and kind of pick up on it um, but it's kind of humorous like there's some fantastic signage in this game <laughs> uh, and how, how long is the game it takes about an hour and a half two hours to play through one session but the idea is that you're collecting things all the time so the replay is important yeah it takes a few attempts to be able to get through and so you'll be you, you'll be you know you'll see a few game overs before you get through the game but so to go from start to finish, I know it's different each time it's procedural, but it's, it's quite short, is it? Uh, well, that, that two hours, I mean, you, you're randoming through these bases, but when you play the next time around, new weapons unlock. So, right. so while, the, while one instance of the game is two hours, yeah. you, can, you can kind of snack on it. And I think that's really interesting for this game, is, especially on things like the Vita, is you can just play one round for five or ten minutes and come back to it. And, and, and slowly it sort of builds up. Which is a sort of a playstyle like the the roguelike sort of dungeon crawler games, isn't it? Yeah, I think I think it's fair to say it is roguelike in that sense. You know, it's something I'd be careful not to use too too often. Yeah, everything every everything's a roguelike, roguelike, yeah. <laughs> but um, but yes, uh, in that in that way, we want people to revisit it and come back yeah. to it and, and, and do it all again. <laughs> so is is it like a rogue type game? Uh, when you're dead, you're dead, and you have to start again, or? Will it put you back to the beginning? Yep. So if you if you if the DEFCON meter reaches one, you have a minute left to run through the level, and if you don't make it, then yep, it's uh, start again. Now the 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 powers that you found, like the the ability to use weapons and things, remains. So you there is some benefit to uh, having played again. So it's not a complete reset, but it's a pretty strong hard thing to die and it, and it really helps with the tension of the game when the defcon meter is ticking down and you know you've got your game at stake uh, it makes it makes it makes for a great a great play and has it is it had an ESRB or a Peggy rating yet do you know what you're aiming at uh, we believe it's gonna be a teen mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so it should be a teen in um, oh, okay so I mean yeah talk about <laughs> Top 10 steps to victory, number three, bye. <laughs> Consumerism at its best. You know, it's helping us sell our video game. <laughs> okay. 
And this is their first game, is it, um, the studio? Yep, so this is Dynamite's first title. Um, and they've, uh, they use Unity, um, which has helped them tremendously as a small studio. And they've been very instrumental, actually, in helping uh, us get Unity onto the PlayStation platform. This is one of the first Unity titles. So we've had a lot of good feedback back to the Unity team, and they've been helping us, uh, you know, get, get Unity wrangled onto all the different platforms on PlayStations. And so your role as a producer in the, in the sort of setup, you're not with the studio, you're an outside producer, how does that work? Uh, so I, I'm basically the conduit for helping Dynamite create the game. So I speak to them, uh, you know, every day, find out what they need, and try and get them that from Sony and, and, and help them just manage the project. So uh, I'm, 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 helping the, uh, I'm helping with like the QA of the project, doing the localization, uh, they use some art resources and we manage the music for them because the game has beautiful music so we help produce that with them and then they then you know the, the bugs and things in the game flow back through us to them so we can you know address anything that's coming up as, as we're finishing the game so really as the producer my job is uh, not is to just really sort of help empower the developers with the stuff that Sony can offer um, and so we try and deliver as much as we can to them ah, I'm out of bullets so, so um, with that, it's a Sony exclusive. But, but I was surprised to hear it coming on by like, non-Sony platforms like iOS devices. Yeah, that, I mean that's an interesting point. And 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 the reason we're on iOS is is to sh to give people that taste to show what they're missing when they when they, when they when they're playing on the PlayStation because it is a reduced experience on that device. I mean, it's a fun game to play, but it isn't the same game. And so, what we hope to do is, you know, give a people a uh, the opportunity to connect with the PlayStation world wherever they are, you know. So it's about promoting the fantastic games that we have on PlayStation, and 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 this sort of small companion game can help people understand what 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 they can get into if they if they buy it on their PlayStation. And is it a one-game deal? I mean, is it a deal, that sort of support? Is, is it going to carry on to the next game? Uh, the, well, that's not. There's, the way the Worldwide Studios typically works is we like nice relationships with developers, and so we don't really do like one product deals. It's you know we form a relationship with them and work through the process of what we're going to make together. So I am hoping yeah. we'll make many great games together. Yeah, yeah. I was just asking because um, that game company seemed to have well, obviously quite a poster boy for getting some really great support. It seemed from Sony and really making it what they are, and that seemed to be a very specific after free. Then that was their lot sort of thing. Yeah, this is not the same similar yeah. deal. Yeah. Cool, well that's great, it's really interesting to hear about the game and also behind the scenes in terms of how the game's been developed. I'm looking forward to getting hands on it myself. I just have to decide which platform to play it on though. Yeah. <laughs> I've got well, all you these choices. Because you just need to buy it once and then you can play it on all of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect, yes. But yeah, I'll have a little look, look at the Vita before we finish. In fact, do you want to just talk us through the Vita version? So I'll sure. play yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, so the Vita version is the exact same game, the full, the full title with all of the beautiful graphics, all of the procedural level generation, everything that the game on the PS4 has. Um, and in this, in this game, it's the, it's the same as the PlayStation in that you have both East and West missions, and you're trying to stop that plan to nuke the moon by collecting lots of uh, plans. Uh, the developers have worked really hard to try and maintain the, the strong crisp look of the game and the and and the uh, the quality of the animation. In most rooms, if you don't run in, you can usually tiptoe in, and then no one will see you. And then if you were to use a silenced weapon, which you have right now, you'd be able to carefully one by one. While you, you, if you shoot uh, the guys while the others aren't watching them, the, then you maintain the stealth. Sneak up behind them as well, and and with it, and then pushing. See, he didn't see that time because he was yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so running is just if you can do it a lot or or little, is it? Yeah. So you got walk and run, and 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 they're more likely to hear you while you're running. Yeah. Yeah. 
sometimes the easiest way to hit a barrel or something is going to a cover point, find the nearest cover point. There's one over there and, and circle. There you go. Yeah, different different aim style and cover. Get more points for like a headshot. Yep. So you get more points for headshots or stealthy headshots or all of that good stuff. Oh yeah, and you're saying you, get, you can do like a chain. Yep. And there's multipliers for doing the, the same thing continuously or pulling pulling off uh, big kills. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna be. I think you're gonna have to move over over there. <laughs> yeah, you can do it from there maybe. Oh, they seen me. Yeah, some of them have seen you. Is it one shot kill? Uh, not always. And as the game gets harder, the enemies get stronger or armored. Some of them wear better helmets, and you have to shoot the helmet off before you can get them. Um, there's a great animation where their head, where their little helmet pongs off the top of their head as you hit them. This being the first level, most of the guys are one-shot kills. Yeah. Well, thanks for showing us Counter Spy. It looks really good. Like I said, on all the all the different platforms. So um, we'll go and give it a go. Thanks a lot. Thank you.